Antonio starts right now. We are starting your morning with a live look outside right now and looked a little overcast. Yeah, maybe? felt pretty good. <laughs> uh, it felt a little crisp out there. Happy Sunday, everybody. It is six o'clock. Welcome to Good Morning San Antonio. Myself and Erica hanging out with you, stepping in for Max and Sarah today. Yeah, I don't mind it. It's not too yeah, bad. Yeah, this is good. You know, we worked together for a long time. Oh, yeah. Used to be desk neighbors till you left me recently. Just play. <laughs> she, she was, <laughs> she was I asked to move. I wanted to. Jeez. I am curious, move. guys. How long have y'all been with KSAT, Erica? 12 years. 12 years? 13. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. And the, most of that, we've sat next to each other. Absolutely. Yeah, so, we were both overnights for a while. Uh -huh. yeah, we started both cool. overnights and then... We were both dayside for a little bit, yeah. and then digital yeah. team, and now look I'm at us now. Happy, happy you guys are with <laughs> us. You guys make my my six, seven years here at KSET dwarf in You're catching comparison. Up. You're catching I'll get up there. Sarah. I'll yeah. get there eventually. Hey, I do want to talk about the forecast today. The main story today is that it's going to be cloudy and cool with some areas of sprinkles and mist. Now, as we look ahead to Monday night, a cold front is going to arrive tomorrow afternoon. That'll make it windy Monday night and Tuesday. We'll talk about how high those wind gusts will go, but it does look like we're still on track for a pleasant Thanksgiving. Maybe a little bit more cloud cover in the forecast now for Thanksgiving, but still pretty pleasant. So coming up, a lot to talk about in the forecast, but first, let's get you a, a look outside right now. You can see that we are dealing with areas of fog. Visibility down to less than two miles in New Braunfels. Low visibility in Pleasanton early this morning. Areas of fog have developed, and when we look at your KSAT 12-hour forecast for the day, patchy fog this morning. We're hovering right around 60 degrees. It's going to stay cloudy for most of the day. Hard for us to get rid of these clouds. And then as we head into the afternoon, maybe right around 68 with uh, patchy mist and sprinkles possible during the day today. So maybe not the best day to be outside, but at least it's going to be uh, uh, pretty cool and we won't have to deal with that heat. Now tomorrow again, front arrives and that will set up a windy Monday night and Tuesday. Details ahead. RJ, Erica. Thank you, Sarah. Well, top story this morning. We're hearing more about the apologies from a man arrested for shooting someone weeks ago at a downtown IHOP. Yeah, and this was interesting. As that man was walking passing our KSAT crew on his way to jail, he told our KSAT reporter Avery Everett that he was sorry. Take a listen. I'm sorry for the family. Apologies, not typically what you hear as a suspect heads to jail. 31-year-old Roberto Banda now faces a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. After the San Antonio Police Department arrested him on suspicion of shooting a man in the head two weeks ago, we found the updated arrest affidavit, which listed the man as Daniel Morales. That victim currently is still in very critical condition. It happened November 4th early in the morning on East Commerce Street, outside a downtown IHOP. SAPD says the situation had two parts. First, Banda and others got into an argument outside the restaurant. Morales broke up the argument. SAPD told us tonight, Banda and Morales did not know each other. It was just a verbal altercation. That's when Banda left the scene and Morales went back inside. An hour later, police say Banda returned to the restaurant and shot Morales, who was sitting in his car. They say Banda then took off. Uh, once detectives were able to find that suspect vehicle, then we were able to pin that to the suspect. Police say Morales was hit multiple times in the head and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Two weeks later, while Morales is still recovering, Banda say is saying to sorry the to Morales' family. I will be praying for you. In the arrest affidavit, Banda admitted that the gun he used was in the glove box of his car. Police now have a hold of that gun and are possibly considering it evidence. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Happening today in Lytle, the city's water system will undergo maintenance. It starts tonight at 10 and will end tomorrow morning around 3. Water pressure there will be reduced as crews do their work, and the city hopes that water pressure will be kept above 20 PSI. Now, we have been told to warn you that if water pressure falls too low, a boil water notice will be issued. If that happens, the city will let everyone know as quickly as possible, and that boil notice will likely last until late Tuesday morning. Well, we're just days away from Thanksgiving, and if you're getting ready to travel, you are not alone. Millions of Americans are on their way to their Thanksgiving destinations. Experts are predicting this travel season will break records, but as ABC's Johnny Fernandez reports, a storm is moving across the country, putting millions of plans at risk. Millions of Americans have hit the road or are heading to the airport for Thanksgiving as a major storm moves across the country. 
The storm system will bring rain, thunderstorms, and winds in different parts of the states between Sunday and Wednesday. On Turkey Day itself, the weather is expected to be cooler than normal. TSA predicts more than 30 million people to take the skies between now and November 27th. That's up 10% from the same time last year. According to AAA, the busiest and most expensive days to fly between Thanksgiving will be Tuesday, November 21st and Wednesday the 22nd. With holiday travel expected to hit record numbers, some travelers were looking to avoid it this year. So we try not to travel during Thanksgiving, but... We have to take the grandkids to see the grandparents. AAA predicting most people will opt to drive with nearly 50 million Americans expected to get behind the wheel with the busiest day to drive being Wednesday. That's why some travelers see the train as their best option. You know, I got to worry about the cars. I got to worry about the airports. It's easier. It's yeah. just as simple. Johnny Fernandez, ABC News, New York. And speaking of travel, if you're about to head out the door this morning, here's a live look at the roads with Transguide. Yeah, yeah you there can is see very the fog foggy. back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you need to fill up this morning, here's a look at the current prices for regular unleaded gas. The national average is $3.31. Texas average $2.80. San Antonio looking at just above the Texas average at $2.82. All right, now to the court. Unfortunately, another tough loss for our San Antonio Spurs here at home. They were hoping to end their losing streak last night against the Memphis Grizzlies. So let's start here with Wemby. Of course, Wemby was everywhere in the first half. Hard not to be when you're 7'4", but he was blocking shots, hitting threes, got a nice rebound, nice shot right there. The rookie ended up with 19 points, 13 rebounds, and 8 blocks. That is an NBA record right there for a rookie and 4 assists. But in the end, this was the story of the game here. Bad defense down the stretch. So the Spurs led 68-51 at halftime, but the Grizzlies surged in the fourth quarter, overcoming a 19-point deficit. And your San Antonio Spurs lose this one 120-108. to There's a lot, of, a lot of good points for us that we can, uh, you know, take from this game. Now I think it's just important, like, how to learn and play for 48 minutes. That's it. All right, that was Spurs for Chetty Osmond right there. So next up for the Spurs, they still are playing here at home. Back-to-back -back home games against Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. And now James yeah. Harden is with the Clippers. There you go. <laughs> Right. This is going to be tomorrow <laughs> at 7 p.m. And then Wednesday, both games are at the Frost Bank Center. It's like they're yeah. running out of gas, like right when they get into the right. fourth quarter. Because I've yeah. been to a couple games here mm -hmm. at home, and they have this big lead, and then it's, yeah, it ends. Definitely something that i got to figure out. I was at the game last night. Very frustrating to watch them get ahead by so many points and then just kind of give up these games. All right, moving on hopefully, tomorrow. Hopefully, <laughs> two more. We got two more games coming up. We can get yeah. some wins. All right, guys, it's 608 right now and 60 degrees outside. Now, one of the best Christmas light displays in San Antonio is back and brighter than ever. Still to come, we're talking about the Light the Way display at UIW. All right, taking a live look at live cam out there. And as Sarah just mentioned, got some fog out oh, there. Yeah. So if you got to head out right now, just be aware of that. Uh, Sarah will be right back with the forecast. That's coming up. Well, we have a lot to be thankful for, and I'm thinking that we're going to be thankful for this Thanksgiving forecast. Yeah, we yeah. are. You know, I've been combing over the data, and there will probably be a little bit more cloud cover on okay. Thanksgiving, but still decent amount of sunshine. It's going to feel like Thanksgiving. And it's going to feel like Thanksgiving. Okay. It's going to be That's on good. the cooler side, you know, highs in the low 60s rather than in the 70s. So it's going to be pretty <laughs> nice for Thanksgiving, but I do want to get you through your morning because we do have areas of fog out there. Outside right now, you can see that fog. It's 61 degrees. Temperature is hovering just around 60 degrees everywhere in South Central Texas. Visibility down to about six miles in San Antonio. Elsewhere, though, especially in areas outside of the the city center, we're seeing lower visibilities. Take a look at Rock Springs, Pleasanton, zero visibility. That's some dense fog in Rock Springs and Pleasanton. Even in Hondo, visibility less than two miles, three mile visibility in New Braunfels, five mile visibility in Kerrville. This is a great reminder that we are going to be pretty cloudy today and 
there are going to be times where we could even see some sprinkles or perhaps some mist and drizzle. Showing you the weather setup here because across the nation we've got one system working its way through uh, the uh, parts of Kansas and Nebraska and Oklahoma. This is a low with a cold front behind it and this is that cold front that's going to move through tomorrow. Take a look at temperatures behind this front. It's cold but it's not that arctic cold air. Temperatures are in the 30s in Colorado very normal for this time of year for folks in Colorado. But this is that front that's going to move through and it's going to allow for cooler conditions during the second half of the week. But for now, what's happening is it's interesting. That low is pulling in some Gulf of Mexico moisture. So that's why we've got the fog out there this morning and that's why it's going to stay fairly cloudy. So taking you through your KSAT 12 hour forecast, patchy fog this morning, right around 10, it's still going to be cloudy right near 60 degrees around noon some sprinkles are going to be possible and then in the afternoon and evening perhaps even some patchy mist and drizzle. Now we are only going to get up to 68 degrees today so temperatures staying in the 60s pretty cool like yesterday uh, around San Antonio with the added addition of uh, sprinkles and mist possible. So let me take you through the future cast when this cold front moves through. This is a look at early Monday morning. That front will be moving through tomorrow morning. The panhandle in San Antonio rain is not super likely. You can see that when the front moves through by the middle of the day, mainly the rain should be up near the Austin area, perhaps near Canyon Lake, New Braunfels and Seguin. But regardless of if you get rain or not, this is going to be a very quick moving system. So it would rain for maybe five, 10 minutes, and then all that rain would be well east. But areas like Gonzalez could get on the rain as well. That front will move through around noon to three o'clock. It's still going to be warm tomorrow before that front moves through right around 78. But once that front moves through, it's going to get pretty windy and by the evening temperatures will be dropping down into the 50s. Speaking of that wind, I know a lot of people are so excited for Christmas decorations. <laughs> I would suggest to postpone setting up those outdoor Christmas decorations until Wednesday. And this is the reason why, because tomorrow during the evening hours and early on Tuesday, it's going to get very windy. We're talking wind gusts of up to 35 to 40 miles per hour. So during the day on Tuesday, we're still going to be dealing with those windy conditions. So maybe do the Christmas decorations outside Wednesday or a little bit later. Speaking of Wednesday, let's talk a bit about Thanksgiving week. OK, so Tuesday to, on a Tuesday, it's going to be windy gusts up to 35 miles per hour, highs in the 60s and mostly sunny Wednesday. Good travel weather for most of us around Texas. There's a small possibility for some rain in the Rio Grande Valley on Wednesday. We'll talk about that coming up in a bit in the next half hour. And then Thursday, Thanksgiving itself, a chilly start, 42 degrees and a few clouds on Thursday itself, but 63 for the high. So the biggest takeaway there is if you're planning on uh, getting the smoker going for that turkey or maybe you're going to do a brisket on Thursday, know that it's going to be cold in the morning but cool in the afternoons. Just to recap everything I said, patchy sprinkles and mist today, staying cloudy, 68 degrees. Monday warm before that front moves through in the afternoon and then it'll get windy. Gusts up to 35 miles per hour through Tuesday. A little bit more cloud cover than forecast earlier on Thursday, but still a nice day and good for shopping on Black Friday. We'll be back with more news after the break. In case you missed it last night, the annual Light the Way Holiday Festival filled the night with holiday cheer at the University of the Incarnate Word. The event featured a million twinkling Christmas lights, a firework display, and plenty of festive fun. People enjoyed live music, food trucks, and conversations with Santa. Our very own Steve Spreester was the MC of the event. It is not holiday season until we light the lights at the corner of Hildebrand and Broadway. This is a good reason to all come together in joy, in hope, and yes, in light. So we have so much to be thankful for and so much to celebrate. Now, in case you missed the event last night, you can watch it all right now on our website and you can see all the lights every night 
at dusk now through January 6th. That's, I love this time of year. There's so many, yeah. look at how beautiful that looks. That is a great display there. And of course the Riverwalk, they're gonna have oh, those yeah. out there too. So yeah, definitely a lot of cool light displays, but UIW, one of the most traditional ones here in San Antonio. Love it, yeah, yeah go check that out. All right guys, it's 620 right now, Sunday morning, and now we are up to 61 degrees outside. Just ahead, a look at what's new in theaters. There are several new flicks. We'll tell you if you need to get the popcorn ready. We're doing a sort of origin story of a villain. It's very different than a story about Katniss. We're 64 years um, before all the other ones, so it's almost a period piece to the other movies. So like world creation was really different, hair and makeups, wardrobes, totally different. The games are entirely different. All right, excited for this one. Several new movies are in theaters this weekend, including the Hunger Games, here we go, it's back. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. It's expected to top the box office this weekend, opening in the $50 million range in North America. About the perversion of the holiday. It's about the greed, it's about how we all pretend to be thankful, but we really just want to kill someone for a flat screen television. Well, that'll get your attention. The horror <laughs> film Thanksgiving aims to put the terror in Turkey. And you may never look at Thanksgiving the same way again. Director Eli Roth has been working on the idea for over a, a dozen years. This one is rated R and obviously not for the kiddos. A brother is a friend who can never leave you. It's the strongest bond in the world. I would kill to have a sibling to sing with. All right, this one is for the kiddos here. The Trolls crew, they're back and bigger, better than ever. The lead character, Branch, is voiced by Justin Timberlake. He reunites with his former boy bandmates in the family tale. The soundtrack has a lot of people buzzing for some time now, and you can check it all out now on the big screen. You're fired. Good news is you got two options. Option one, that's where you're currently at. Or American Samoa. Are you serious? Finally, Next Goal Wins stars Michael Fassbender as a soccer coach exiled to the worst national team on the planet. The big question, can he make a difference? This underdog tale is rated PG-13. I like how they have a lot of options right now for the kiddos, for the adults, and that yeah. Trolls one I'll probably take. Liana to go see. Yeah, the Hunger Games and uh, you know what, Trolls, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of people already like making a big deal about that right now. I, I think there's some like in sync songs oh, because like the other, oh, okay, yeah. now we're talking. There you go. I'm there. <laughs> You're there now? Yes. <laughs> Switching gears now to the evolving world of AI and child development. All right, so just in the first few years of life, there's one million neural connections formed every second. Normally, most things develop through natural parent-child engagement, but now AI is stepping in to help. Alexa Lorenzo has the details. My name is Sophia, and I am an artificially intelligent robot. Sophia is one of the world's most lifelike AI robots. She's spoken at the United Nations and been on the cover of magazines. But could something like Sophia help you raise your child? I'm a counselor, so it completely takes away from the, the attachment, the nurturing that you have with the parent and the child. What if these devices didn't have a human-like appearance? One of the AI-driven products available is the Cocoon Cam. This system uses computer vision technology to track a child's breathing, temperature, and movements. It also sends alerts to parents in case of irregularities like breathing issues or extreme room temperatures. The Aura Smart Baby Monitor does all that and has HD night vision, remote panning, and an in-app daily activity tracker. Blue Smart Mia is a smart bottle feeding system that tracks and analyzes your baby's intake and consumption patterns. But AI technology comes with its own set of considerations. First, it lacks human interaction. Although it can monitor activities, it can't engage with them like a human can. Also, there's the risk of over-reliance on technology. And there are major privacy and security concerns as these systems collect a wealth of sensitive data about the child. Whether or not you decide to get a little help from AI, experts agree it's no replacement for real quality time with your little one. I'm Alexa Lorenzo reporting. All right, some interesting uh, things there. The robot, I don't know about the robot. I don't know about the robot. I do like the whole, like, 
sleeping thing at night where it mm -hmm. helps you like monitor their breathing right. and stuff. That's as a parent, I, I would have loved that. <laughs> yeah, here we go. What AI? Okay, where are you going with this? Uh, Six twenty-eight right now. Sixty-one degrees outside on your Sunday morning. Now we have a lot heading your way in our next half hour, including tragedy at a Taylor Swift concert. What we're now learning about the death of a fan, plus the latest response from Taylor. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. It's 6.30 on Sunday, Sunday fun day. When Sunday I get to hang out with Erica and fun Sarah. day. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> November thanks, 19th. Thanks for starting your morning with us. A lot to talk about in the weather, so let's check in with Sarah Spivey. Yeah, the most immediate thing is that we're dealing with areas of fog this morning. Take a look at the Trans Guide camera behind me, and this is 410 at Military, and you can see the fog there uh, with the, on those street lamps. So just be careful careful this morning. Visibility is okay around San Antonio, really seeing decent visibility about six miles, but outside of the city center, visibility less than two miles in Hondo, down to zero practically in Rock Springs and in Pleasanton. So we do have some areas of dense fog, even around the San Antonio metro area. If you head outside of the city center, that's where the fog is the densest. Castroville visibility, three miles, less than two mile visibility in Hondo. Gonzalez, half a mile visibility. And for the forecast today, it's going to stay cloudy. We may even have some sprinkles and some patchy mist. Now, this is not going to be substantial rain by any means. Again, as you're heading out and about, you may just have to turn on those windshield wipers once or twice. Temperatures staying in the 60s today, so it's going to be cool. And we'll have south-southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? Well, a front arrives late tomorrow. That'll make it windy Monday night and Tuesday. Uh, that'll lead to a cool and pleasant weather for Thanksgiving. A few more clouds than what was initially forecast, but still cool and pleasant. There will be some travel trouble elsewhere, though, across the nation. I've got a look at your travel forecast, not only in Texas, but across the United States coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. Well, a woman found guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon will find out her sentence tomorrow. Amanda Montoya was previously charged with the murder of her boyfriend, Cesar Gallegos, back in 2016. Now, this was a retrial after Montoya's case ended in a mistrial because a jury couldn't decide a verdict. Now, on Friday, a new jury spent about 11 hours deliberating and came back with a not guilty on murder, but guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. This is still a first degree felony and the punishment range is five to 99 years in prison. The punishment phase will begin Monday morning in the 227th District Court. A suspected serial killer will be making his first court appearance tomorrow up in Travis County. Raul Mesa was arrested back in May for allegedly killing his roommate, Jesse Fraga. Mesa, before being arrested, called police and implicated himself not only in Fraga's death, but the murder of 65-year-old Austin woman named Gloria Lofton back in 2019. Austin police say they are looking into 8 to 10 cold cases Mesa may be connected with, including a possible possible case right here in San Antonio. Mesa had previously been in jail for murder in 1982. He was given a plea deal in the murder of eight-year-old Kendra Page. He only served 11 years of that sentence. Mesa, who is charged with capital murder, is charged with capital murder, excuse me, no word yet if the death penalty will be applied in this case. And new details this morning as people are still reacting following a tragedy at a Taylor Swift concert. The music superstar addressed her fans yesterday in an Instagram post shortly after tragedy struck during her Friday night concert in Rio down there in Brazil. A 23-year-old fan became ill at the concert and then later died. Last night's concert was then postponed. Here's ABC's Johnny Fernandez with the details. Taylor Swift's Saturday evening concert in Rio de Janeiro has been postponed due to extreme temperatures reaching over 100 degrees, which felt much hotter as a heat wave swept through Brazil during the week. The decision comes one day after a 23-year-old fan became ill at Swift's Friday night performance and later died. Swift writing on Instagram, It is with a shattered heart that I say we lost a fan earlier tonight before my show. I cannot tell you how devastated I am by this. 
Concert organizers Time for Fun issued a statement saying Ana Clara Benavides Machado was attended to by paramedics after feeling unwell. She was taken to the stadium's first aid center, then to a hospital where she died about an hour later. Her cause of death is still unknown. My broken heart goes out to her family and friends, Swift wrote. This is the last thing I ever thought would happen when we decided to bring this tour to Brazil. Approximately 60,000 fans had gathered at Nilton Santos Stadium for Swift's Eras Tour. Temp Temperatures soared to 102 degrees, Swift stopping her performance after noticing some fans appeared to need water. It's very hot though, but Swift doesn't need water when it's this hot, they should be needed. At one point, even tossing a bottle of water into the crowd herself. Before Saturday's show was canceled, fans gathered outside the stadium once again. This woman, she says, she prepared for the extreme temperatures, lots of water, wetting our bodies, applying sunscreen, she says. 19-year-old fan Alice Kettner worried about the heat, but she said she worked hard, saved money to be at the show, and has been taking all the precautions possible, drinking water, umbrellas, fans. Officials have said free water will be distributed at future events. Plus, there will be eight medical posts at the remaining shows. So far, no dates have been announced for Swift's rescheduled concerts. Johnny Fernandez, ABC News, New York. It's an action-packed weekend on the field, on the court, with another tough loss for our San Antonio Spurs. Oh, yeah. RJ is staying on top of it all. Let's start with what's happening Today, though, RJ. Yeah, this is what I meant by Sunday fun day. Both the Cowboys and Texans in action today, a little bit later on. So, uh, you know what? Get your popcorn ready here. Cardinals taking on the Texans here. Houston is 5-4, and four, and they are in the running for the AFC South Division Championship. C.J. Stroud has been great for Houston, really kind of rebuilding that program right there. And then the Cowboys are also taking on the Panthers at the same time. Panthers, one of the worst teams in the league. Cowboys need to go in there and take care of business. Hopefully, Dak Prescott and the boys can keep things rolling out there in Carolina. All right, now to some college football action. Texas A&M hosting Abilene Christian for the Aggies' first game since their former head coach, Jimbo Fisher, was fired last week. Defensive line coach Elijah Robinson serving as the interim coach there. And you know what? It started out a little bit slow, but then things picked up for the Aggies. They're up 24-7 in the third quarter. Saw a touchdown there from Musi Muhammad. One had to grab hurdles all the way to the touchdown. Now, this was really kind of a cool moment here. The 12th man special stole the show in the final quarter. Coach Robinson turned to an all-walk-on kickoff team. All walk-ons here on the field. This was a nod to former coach Jackie Sherrill, the first to do it 40 years ago. And you saw right there that they ended up getting a fumble recovery there to kind of lead to this big win here. Yeah, Sarah's just got the thumbs up. <laughs> alive and well, baby. 12th man is alive and well, that, even if we that. don't know who our coach is going to be. <laughs> Good vibes out there. Now, they do play against LSU this upcoming week. That's always a fun game as we head into Thanksgiving. All right, some other scores here. Texas taking care of business last night. Hey, they're still in the running for the college football playoff. They win on the road in Ames. Take care of business 26-16 over Iowa State. How about TCU? They're keeping things going here, keeping their bull hopes alive with a win over Baylor there, 42 17 and this was a fun one top 25 matchup K State ended up beating Kansas 31 to 27 and how about this I know David Sears was happy about this one here <laughs> Texas Tech secures a win over Central Florida thanks to a blocked extra point that would have tied the game the Red Raiders have won three straight and are now getting to bowl eligibility and your eyes do not deceive you this is I, I could this was I couldn't even watch this. Whoop, whoop. I just this was horrible. Uh, uh, Texas State lost 77-31 by <laughs> to Arkansas State. I thought it was the other way that around. That was brutal. No, that's just morning <laughs> eyes. I thought it was 77. I'm so sorry. No, yeah, that was brutal. Uh, the Bobcats, uh, bad, bad loss. We're moving on. We're moving on. Yes, okay, keep going. So, keep going. <laughs> next one here. Hey, you know what? UIW uh, finishes off their schedule with a big win over Houston Christian, 45-24. Now the Cardinals await their football playoff fate. All right, this was a lot of fun. Friday night at the Dome, this year's, use, this year's group of UTSA seniors played a pivotal role in the rise of the Roadrunners football program. Look at these guys right here. Rashad Wisdom, quarterback Frank Harris making all the plays there. 16 other student athletes there for senior night. Friday night, big senior night there. UTSA improved to 6-0 in conference play with a win over South Florida. 38-10 there at the Dome. 
Frank Harris, my guy, I've been covering this kid since he was at Clemens. Over 500 yards of total offense, six touchdowns, three passing, three rushing, and what a farewell there at the Alamo Dome that'll go down in the record books. It is bittersweet, you know, not to play in Alamo Dome no more. Um, have lots of emotion. I think about the Alamo Dome. I was blessed to, to play a couple of games here in high school and to play my whole college career here. So I'm um, definitely going to miss it. I'm going to miss some Alamo Dome cookies. Um, uh, every home game I get Alamo Dome cookies and they're the best. So I'm going to miss those. Not only do very few kids stay four years anymore, you can't even find kids that stay one year anymore. And our kids have been here the entire time. And I've got to coach this entire group the entire time. And it's, it's been a Cinderella story. I, I mean it. I, I'm grateful. Yeah, an unbelievable group there. Now, of course, the big question there, the burning questions, if you will, Jeff Trailer's future with the program after interviewing for Texas A&M. That was last week. Coach Trailer did not address it. He pretty much said that this is all about senior night. So UTSA will play 24th ranked Tulane next week to close out the regular season. That game's actually going to be on case at 12 on Friday afternoon. So good stuff there for the Roadrunners. Not great for the Bobcats. I need to get so my you eyes need to checked. Get some more caffeine. More, more caffeine, something. I'm still yeah. a Bobcat. <laughs> you know what? Always. Eat them Always. up. Uh, tough loss there, but uh, congrats to UTSA taking care of business there. Exactly. On senior night. Okay, guys, 642 and 61 degrees outside. Just ahead, how you can make a difference in the lives of our community this holiday season. All you can do if you all with a pair of shoes. There we go. Yeah, that's a very important drive there. Okay, taking a look, live look outside. Okay, we're just seeing some fog kind of build up out there. Yeah, it's, it's gotten a lot thicker since the last time we saw it here on, on City Camp. So we'll check with Sarah a little bit about that fog. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio on your Sunday morning. You still have time to team up with SAPD and Zapatos to take part and share the shoes right here in San Antonio. Yeah, the gift of a pair of shoes can help kids here in the Alamo City put their best foot forward. You can donate now through December 12th. You can deliver a pair of new shoes to any of the seven SAPD substations. Every donation will go to a child in need through Zapatos Shoe Distribution. So what is needed? So we need new shoes and socks for school age kids in pre-K all the way to 12th grade. Tennis shoes are the most requested items, but any new pair of shoes is definitely appreciated. We have all the details and a list of locations to donate right now on KSAT.com. No Shave November is in full swing and the men of KSAT are uh, still yes. growing out. <laughs> beards for a good cause. Yeah, this is something we've been talking about since the start of November. We're raising money for 12 Cancer Foundation. So get out your phones right now if you can. Please scan this code if you have an opportunity to donate. This will take you to the place where you can donate as well as other important information. Everything you need to know. So go ahead and scan that code on your screen right now. Now I know you all started with you started with the beard RJ and yeah. Okay, look. I shortened it. So here's the thing. <laughs> okay. Y'all may not know this, but yesterday we did mm -hmm. a huge campaign push for Max I saw to get that. money. I saw look at that. that. Donated. And look at this. He not yeah. only surpassed Mike Osterhage, he okay. surpassed Mike Osterhage by $2,000 because of our awesome viewers. Yeah. Max now has over 100 mm -hmm. individual donations. Mm -hmm. Let's put in a little love Let's for RJ. Yes, <laughs> RJ. RJ needs I'll some love any, right any now. I, at least give me helps. past David Sears. That's all. I'm hoping. $5. <laughs> some bragging rights over David $25. Sears. $25. Yeah. Anything helps. You have proud time. of you, RJ. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got still a while before November is over. But thank we you do. so much to all of our viewers who have made donations uh, to No Shave November. Again, it, benef it benefits a cancer research mm -hmm. organization exactly. yeah. to help to prevent Treatment, and prevention. Cure. Yeah, definitely a very cancers. important cause. And we love doing it because, you know, what we get a part to kind of share our stories as well with the rest of the community. Um, you know, we saw Rashad Wisdom there a little while ago. Uh, part mm -hmm. of my testimonial was for his younger brother who passed away from cancer there. So I was trying to do it in honor of Rashad Wisdom and his family. All Bryce right. Wisdom. Donate a few bucks to RJ's cause. Much appreciated. Thank All you. right. Hey, outside right now, we do have areas of fog, guys. Here's mm -hmm. a look at visibility right now. Down to a quarter of a mile in Rock Springs, down to a quarter of a mile in Pleasanton and in Gonzales. So outside of the city center of San Antonio, we have that dense fog. Whenever fog gets to less than a mile, it becomes a bit of 
of a hazard. Outside right now, as you're driving out and about in San Antonio, you'll notice the areas of fog out there. It's just not very dense uh, outside, but it could be in the next couple of hours. So temperatures hovering right near 60 degrees, 59 in Kerrville, 59 in Pleasanton, 59 in Eagle Pass. Good morning in Del Rio. It's 61 degrees, 62 in Catula, 59 in Kennedy and around San Antonio, 61 Port Asse, 62 Castroville, 59 in Bulverde and Bernie, and it's 60 in Comfort. Now temperatures are not going to stray too far away from where they are right now during the day. Staying in the 60s, fog this morning, perhaps a few sprinkles by noon. Now this is not going to be substantial rain by any means. You may just have to turn on your windshield wipers once or twice if you happen to get some of those sprinkles this afternoon 68 by about three or four that's it for the high today because we're going to stay locked into cloud cover and then later on tonight i do think we could have some patchy drizzle out there this evening we're going to have south winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour so all in all a cloudy cool and a day where we could have some sprinkles and some patchy drizzle here's a look at the weather setup you can see an isolated shower there uh, moving into gillespie county across the nation we've got a low pressure system across the Midwest, Nebraska, uh, Kansas, and Oklahoma getting some of that rain as well. Behind this is a cold front. Now this cold front is going to move through San Antonio tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures behind this front, not too much cooler in the 30s. And as a lot of people are going to be traveling this week, I want to take you through your Thanksgiving week travel cast. Here's that front. If you're traveling early uh, on Monday, know that there could be some rain in East Texas. That's about it. Here in San Antonio, any rain will likely stay east, but there is a small window right around noon. We could see a brief shower tomorrow. Temperatures will be in the 70s during the day tomorrow, but then when that front moves through, they'll drop into the 50s and 60s. Heading into Tuesday and Wednesday, that same system that is going to be bringing us the cold front is going to cause a bit of a travel headache for areas across the Great Lakes and the Atlantic states by Wednesday. That'll mainly be focused across New England in areas uh, across the northern tier of the United States. Meanwhile, a little bit of a forecast update for you on Wednesday. There does look to be a low pressure system moving through Mexico. Now, the key here is this low pressure system is likely going to stay south of San Antonio, so we shouldn't have any inclement weather for Wednesday and Thursday, Thanksgiving in San Antonio. The one thing I will say is if you are traveling to the Rio Grande Valley or Laredo on Wednesday, there could be a few passing showers. Again, that low will be staying south and we'll have pretty nice weather on Thanksgiving. A chilly start at 42, afternoon high of 63. One last thing I'll mention before heading to break is that we are going to be windy tomorrow night and Tuesday, gusts up to 35 miles per hour. More news for you after the break. It's the Christmas season and that means the annual Salvation Army's Parade of Kettles competition is in full swing. Yeah, Brad Mayhar and the crew there. You can help out by taking out your phone right now, scanning this QR code. If you get an opportunity to donate, local businesses and media are competing to raise the most money to help families in need this holiday season. KSAT 12 News is being represented by our team captain, reporter Daniela Ivara this year. This is a TikTok video she made of her kettle. As you can see, it's all about the eras of our KSAT mascot, Mike. You can check out the whole video on our website. I am excited for this. Yeah, and definitely that's uh, the Taylor Swift, right? Yes. The eras tour. There you go. Yeah, very creative there. From now until midnight on December 24th, KSAT will be competing to raise the most money to help families in the Bear County area and we have all the details right there on ksat.com and, and you showed me the video it's it's, it's really cute. cool it's so cool <laughs> she did so great with her kettle and we will be she will be around town you mm -hmm. know ringing the bell we'll be doing this as well some of us may show up and help her mm -hmm. so keep your eyes peeled for that yeah ksat mike in and around the town he's getting around there he's so got his own Harris <laughs> tour now <laughs> yeah he's making some moves here okay guys 656 right now and uh, 61 degrees outside Taking a live look at the roads with Transkai. Now that the, you know it's getting a little more light yeah. out there, we're seeing some of that fog in some of the areas around San Antonio.
a cloudy and cool day today with patchy sprinkles and mist 68 for the high warmer tomorrow before the front moves through in the afternoon. We'll get up to near 80, but then that front moves through. We see gusty winds of up to 35 miles per hour Monday night and during the day on Tuesday. As we head into the week, know that travel weather should be OK. Cold in the morning on Thanksgiving, a few more clouds and highs in the low 60s on Thanksgiving Day itself. Awesome. Well, thank you for yes. having us today, Sarah. We're with happy you. to have you guys. Thank y'all well, for watching. We'll be back. We're yes. coming back. I hope so, right? Yeah, 8 to 9 so. o'clock. Make sure to check it out. Good morning. They'll be back. Up. They'll be back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, San Antonio. Taking a look outside there with City Cam, and it is already off to a foggy start on your Sunday fun day. So happy to be hanging out with you guys this morning as we get set for your Sunday. Should be a lot of fun today. Sunday fun day. There's a lot going on in sports. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on if you're heading outdoors, mm -hmm. approaching the Thanksgiving holiday, but there is a lot of fog, as you saw. Yeah, your daughter is actually already uh, out in the field right now. Yeah, yeah this is in a softball, softball tur action. tournament. Will be there all day long. So go Tigers! But Sarah, that fog, because I know that's what we're dealing with outside right now. Yeah. Is it going to go away anytime soon? Well, it's going to be with us this morning, and it's going to stay cloudy all day, Erica. In fact, that's the big story today. Cloudy with areas of sprinkles and even some mist possible at times as well. So it's going to be cool with highs only in the 60s. Uh, but another weather headline that you need to be aware of is by tomorrow night, it's going to be windy, mainly because we have a front moving through tomorrow, and that means wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour Monday night and Tuesday. And then finally, another thing I'm watching is the Thanksgiving forecast. Forecast. Right now it looks cool but pleasant. Uh, there's a couple of things to cover in the Thanksgiving forecast that I'll have for you in just a bit. But first, let's get you through the day. Uh, we are dealing with that fog early this morning. You can see out there that it's uh, fairly foggy at the moment. Visibility down to three miles in San Antonio. Visibility down to one mile, though, in Bernie and less than a mile in New Braunfels. Down to practically zero out along Highway 90 toward Hondo. So please use caution this morning. This is a great indication that we have slightly higher humidity outside and it's going to stay cloudy all day. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast foggy this morning, some sprinkles possible by noon and then some mist possible in the later afternoon and evening. We're only going to get up to about 68 degrees today. That's it. It's going to be a cool day and then again drizzle possible later on tonight by the evening will still be in the mid 60s. So temperatures kind of just coasting throughout the day. Coming up an update on that Thanksgiving forecast and what you can expect with with that front arriving tomorrow afternoon. RJ. Thank you very much, Sarah. Top stories this morning. 31 year old Roberto Banda has been charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after San Antonio police arrested him for, for allegedly shooting a man in the head two weeks ago. That victim is still in the hospital in critical condition. The shooting happened back on November 4th on East Commerce Street outside a downtown IHOP. Police tell us that Banda and the others here involved got into an argument outside the restaurant. The victim broke up that argument and that's when Banda left the scene and Morales went back inside. An hour later, Banda returned to the restaurant and shot Mr. Morales multiple times who was sitting in his vehicle. San Antonio police charged a man with aggravated assault after they say he threatened to kill a security guard at a Whataburger. 40-year-old Vicente Espinosa was taken into custody yesterday. A confrontation between the two happened back on October 21st. Surveillance shows Espinosa driving a blue Dodge Ram and ordering food in the drive-thru. Police were able to ID him by the car he was driving and facial tattoos. His bond is set at $75,000. In your morning headlines, a man suspected of killing four people in a Tennessee shooting spree has been found dead. Police say that Mavis Christian Jr. killed a 13-year-old girl and three women in a series of shootings across Memphis. So this all started after 9 o'clock on Saturday. Police responded to a shooting that left one woman dead. Investigators later determined that the killing was connected to two other recent shootings involving the same suspect. 
A possible breakthrough in the Gaza hostage crisis, sources say Israel and Hamas are close to a deal that would free dozens of women and children held hostage in Gaza in exchange for a five-day pause in the fighting. The United States is reportedly helping broker the deal. If a deal is reached, it would lead to the first sustained pause in the Gaza conflict since the war began six weeks ago. It is expected that Hamas would free at least 50 hostages in, band in batches. Members of the United Auto Workers Union who work for Ford Motor Motors have approved their labor deal. That final vote showed 69% of members voted to ratify that agreement. For comparison, in a different deal, a little more than half of the General Motors members voted in favor of a similar deal. Stellantis Union members are also voting on their contract, and a partial result from the UAW ratification vote tracker shows that 69% of those members have voted in favor of that. Millions of Americans are on their way to their Thanksgiving destinations with Turkey Day just four days away. Experts are predicting this travel season will break records. TSA predicts more than 30 million people to take to the skies between now and November 27th. That's up 10 percent from the same time last year. According to AAA, the busiest and most expensive days to fly before Thanksgiving will be Tuesday, November 21st and Wednesday, the 22nd. Yeah, a lot of people might be taking to the roads this weekend and gas prices are slightly lower today. That's good news there. Experts say if the current gas prices hold up, it could be, get this, the cheapest nationwide gas price on Thanksgiving Day since 2020. So if you need to fill up, this would be a good morning to do so. Here's a look at the current prices for regular unleaded gasoline. Looking at a national average of 331, Texas average 280, and San Antonio right around there at 282. Doctors' bills, hospital bills, prescriptions, all of that can add up to debilitating debt. According to the Kaiser Family Foundation, nearly a hundred million of us in the U.S. have medical debt. Yeah, definitely there. So are medical credit cards and loans the cure? 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has what you should know before you sign up. If you're struggling to pay your medical bills, it may be tempting to sign up for a medical credit card or medical loan offered by the healthcare provider. But sign or beware. These options can have high interest rates, steep payment penalties, and do damage to your credit. Care Credit is the largest medical credit card company out there and is a subsidiary of Synchrony Financial. A spokesman says that Care Credit's convenient and transparent financing options make health and wellness care more affordable and can be used to pay for a wide range of items. But the average medical credit card carries a whopping 27% interest rate, much higher than a general credit card. That's a big reason the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has warned patients who use these products end up worse off. So what can you do? Instead of signing up for a medical credit card or loan, ask your doctor if they offer low interest payment plans. If that doesn't work. If you have good credit, you may want to consider a personal loan from your bank or credit union where interest rates start around 10%. Never give out your credit card at an emergency room. If you're insured, ask them to send the bill to your insurance company. If you're uninsured, ask them to mail it to you so you can figure out how to pay or negotiate in a calmer setting. And if you get a hospital bill you just can't afford, ask if there's a charitable program you can apply for. You can find out how to apply with your specific hospital at dollar4.org. Marilyn Moritz. KSAT 12 News. A new report on the safety of artificial intelligence has come out, and it tells you how safe or unsafe AI products can be. Yeah, a lot of conversation about AI products. So the product reviews were all done by a nonprofit media reviewer, Common Sense Media, and they used a new rating system. So this evaluates a wide range of AI products with varying degrees of interactivity, looking at privacy, bias, and misinformation in apps commonly used by children. The best reviews went to AI products for education, like Ello, which uses speech recognition to help children read from a limited array of books. We have some remarkably good qualities and good purposes that you can use them for, but they also have some downsides because they are so massive in scope, including sometimes simply false information or deep fakes or misinformation or biased results. 
So the nonprofit says that you can help your kids stay safe by knowing what artificial intelligence works. Are you in the market for a Hyundai? Well, you could soon buy it on Amazon. You heard that right. Amazon selling cars now starting next year. Yeah, you get anything on Amazon now. Okay, <laughs> customers can pick out and buy a car at Amazon.com, then schedule a delivery through a local Hyundai dealer. The new agreement between the two companies also lets buyers of a new Hyundai vehicles in 2025 access Amazon's Alexa from their cars. According to Amazon, the goal is to make the experience as much like buying a car online as possible. Texting between iPhones and Androids will get easier starting next year. Apple plans to adopt RCS technology, which is considered an industry standard. Users will be able to exchange photos and videos, also be able to chat over Wi-Fi or cellular data and know when messages are read. The company says that it will work alongside iMessage and offer better intro Operability. Say that <laughs> yes, twice. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Facebook and Instagram users will be getting new tools to create high quality videos. That parent company Meta says that Emu Edit is coming soon. It will allow users to edit their photos simply by using text descriptions. Target shoppers may soon see some changes in the checkout line. The company has announced that it is restricting the self checkout lines to 10 items or less. If shoppers have more than 10 items, when they will need to use the full service lanes with cashiers. The company says it's designed to shorten wait times and to better understand shoppers' preference. I will be the first to say I've cheated on that and oftentimes <laughs> go to that checkout line with more than 10 items. Oh yeah, all the time. I'll like count them. I was like, eh, two yeah. more items. Uh, we, could, we could get by with this. Yeah, sometimes it just goes faster. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot better for everyone involved. <laughs> Your time now is 8, 10 and the 10th. Let's see, what is that? 62. 62. That's right. Fall decor for Christmas still ahead, where you can get your last minute decorations and some tips to know if you haven't started decorating yet. Let's take a live look at Ooh. live cam. Oh, that I feel like it got worse there, Sarah. Well, that's a different view there, and you can see that we're kind of sitting in the middle of a low cloud fog mm -hmm. out there right now in San Antonio. Yeah, temperatures today are yeah. pretty much going to coast. <laughs> They're in the low <laughs> 60s right now. We may get up to 68 degrees, but really, the big story today is that it's going to be cloudy and cool all day long. Mm -hmm. And there's a small adjustment to the Thanksgiving forecast that I want to talk about. Yep, small adjustment. So <laughs> let's get started. Outside right now, as you can see, that fog is... Uh, dense in spots out there, especially outside of the city center of San Antonio. You look out toward Hondo, visibility down to a quarter of a mile, visibility down to three quarters of a mile in New Braunfels, down to a mile and a half in Pleasanton, and a mile in Rock Springs. Del Rio looking at visibility of about two and a half miles. So this fog is going to be with us this morning. If you have early morning plans, just be a little extra careful on the roads. Taking a look at the authority radar, there is one area of light rain showers right now up in the hill country in Gillespie County toward Fredericksburg. You can see a few light rain showers just passing there north of Kerrville, north of uh, Comfort in Fredericksburg area. We could see a few sprinkles in San Antonio, but generally we're going to be looking at just mainly a cloudy day with perhaps some mist and drizzle later in the afternoon and evening. All right, taking a look across to the nation, you can see that there's a bunch of storms moving through the central plains. This is that cold front that's going to move through San Antonio tomorrow in the uh, afternoon and evening hours. And in fact, uh, it's behind it. We've got some cooler air. It's not necessarily Arctic cold air, but temperatures in the 30s in Denver this time of year, nothing uh, too unusual, but it is going to set up cooler weather for Thanksgiving. And it's bringing in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. That low is pulling that Gulf of Mexico moisture in, and that's why we're seeing the fog right now. So when you look at your KSAT 12-hour forecast for the day, be ready for the clouds and even some areas of patchy sprinkles and mist. Around noon, we'll still be in the low 60s. By the afternoon, 68 degrees if we're lucky. Uh, again, these clouds are going to be with us all day long. About 20% coverage on patchy mist and sprinkles. And then tonight, we could see some drizzle develop. Temperatures will only be in the mid-60s by 9 p.m. So again, temperatures staying pretty steady all day long.
Let's turn our attention now to that front that's going to be moving through tomorrow. Now, as far as rain goes with this front, it's not looking good. Again, maybe one or two showers east of San Antonio. So Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, Gonzales, Austin, that's possible, but they would be very brief and quick moving. That front expected to arrive through a little after lunch, so we are going to get warm. We're going to get up to about 78 degrees before that front moves through. But once that front moves through, it's going to get windy and temperatures will drop will be in the 50s by the evening hours. Let's speak about those winds because I do want to mention that it is going to get pretty windy tomorrow night and Tuesday morning. Wind gusts of up to about 30, 35, even up to 40 miles per hour possible. So if you've already set up your uh, Christmas decorations outside, make sure that all that lightweight, uh, those lightweight decorations are tied down because again, tomorrow night and Tuesday morning, wind gusts up to 35 to 40 miles per hour. There's been a slight update to the Thanksgiving week forecast. This is a look at Wednesday evening. A low pressure system is likely going to develop over Mexico, but at at the moment it does look like it's going to stay south of San Antonio Wednesday night into Thursday. Basically that would just mean a little bit more cloud cover on Wednesday and Thursday. So here's an updated look at that forecast. Still chilly in the mornings in the 40s. Afternoons will be in the 60s. Travel weather, not a major issue, but I'll have your full travel forecast coming up in the next half hour. Again, just know that big things to keep in mind. Cloudy all day today, windy Monday night and Tuesday, and then a few more clouds possible Wednesday and Thursday for your Thanksgiving forecast. We will continue to update that forecast for you as we get new data in and keep you posted. So if you have those Christmas decorations out, especially say, those inflatables, right make there. sure they're like really mm -hmm pin down. Yeah, Monday night into Tuesday especially. You showed me your inflatable uh, Santa that you have. Yeah, we have nice. a Santa sure and a Santa down. train, so I'm going to make sure my husband makes sure it's, to make, it's you extra want that in. train going down the road? It, it'll it'll go the all around the cold, is that? don't want to be fishing that. <laughs> no, not really. No, definitely not. All right, guys, it's uh, 819 right now, 62 degrees outside. We will be right back. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Cannot wait for this story because when I think of antiquing, I think of our promotions. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna like that shout out. Yeah, so before you go shopping for Thanksgiving decor, it might be a good idea to look for items you already have in your home and garden, then head out to the stores. Promotions producer David Hurtado went to Armadillo Antiques and more to create one of a kind centerpieces. This will be good. I'm here with my friend John Bloodsworth. Thank you for joining us, John. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, so today we're talking about decorating your home for Thanksgiving. We're here at Armadillo Antiques and More. But before you come shopping here, you got to shop at home, right, right, John? Right. Pull out some of those favorite things that you have. Then you come here to see if there's anything that'll work with what you already have. So I brought some things from home, John, but we also need to go shopping. So let's go shopping. Let's do it. All right. This, we don't even have to do anything to it. This no, is, we don't, John. Set. Look at this. This, this is looks all great. set for Thanksgiving. This I love the great. turkeys. Look at that, and we've got the pheasants. Yeah, good looking dishes, good looking. And you know, this is always important too, to add height to your table. All right, John, we went shopping. We found a bunch of stuff, great as you thing. can see. Great things here at Armadillo. This is what I brought from home. Nice. It's an old Wedgwood caneware. Mm -hmm. Love this piece. It's missing a couple of things. That's why I got it so inexpensively on eBay from right, England. Right. But I just love it. I think yeah, it's, it's perfect for our Thanksgiving. So, sure is. John, what are we going to do with this today? Okay, well, we're going to go with some colors here right now. They're maybe not traditional Thanksgiving, but definitely a good look in fall. So we're going to be using some ornamental cabbage. So we're just going to plop them in here. You know, easy, easy. Now all we're going to do is take some of these pepper berries. All right. Just start kind of interspersing. And there you've got a beautiful, beautiful arrangement for uh, Thanksgiving table. What I love about it, it's not the conventional fall not colors. Not at all, not at all. And it's using things from outside, from yeah. your home. Yeah, And that's why I brought some of this, Yeah. so that, you know, this is from a tree, from home. Right, right. And so remember, bring in things from outside. Just let yeah. your imagination go wild. Let's go. 
these are some of the items that we found here at Armadillo, yes. which I love this big board, the rug on the table, and then of course we found this box yeah, here Yeah, we found as well. this box right here. Okay, so we've got some moss, got we've some got moss. the horns. What are we gonna do next, Lots John? and lots of leaves. All right, John, this looks fantastic. We've got the seed pods. Right, We've got yeah. the, the leaves, the oak leaves in here with the pine cones and the berries inside this wonderful rustic box. We've got this charcuterie board. And the reason I left a lot of space here, John, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is because you can have this on your festive table right. and put food in there here for charcuterie and I it'll mean, make... What is, what is Thanksgiving without a meal? All right, what's let's, next, let's John? Let's take another piece. This is one of the finds we found here at Armadillo. I really Isn't like cool? this, John. Now we're going to go with a few more traditional fall colors. colors. So All right. again, we've just got some proton. John, thank you so much for showing us these quick and easy Enjoyed Thanksgiving it. decoration Enjoyed ideas. It. Now remember, you can come here to Armadillo mm -hmm. Antiques mm -hmm. and more to yeah. find a lot of what we pulled here. I love the rug, I love the bowl, this was great. And the plants, you can get at your local nursery. You can. Or just go to your trees or bushes at home and yeah. find inspiration and from them. Exactly. All right, John, thank you so much. It was awesome. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Good morning, San Antonio, and welcome. It is Sunday, November 19th, hanging out, filling in for Max and Sarah today. Yes, that's right. And can you believe it's almost Thanksgiving already? And then we talk about Christmas. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, it'll be 2024, but we're yeah. not going to go that far just yet. No, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Still want to enjoy your Sunday here. Sarah yeah. Spivey. Hey, RJ mm -hmm. and, and Erica, it's great to have you guys with us. Love morning. hanging out with you, Sarah. I know. <laughs> we love being here with you, Sarah. <laughs> oh, thank you. You yes. know, Sarah and Max are off today, but mm -hmm. RJ and Erica have been with KSAP for 12, 13 years, so awesome to see them here on the anchor desk. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look outside with uh, Traffic Authority. This is 151 at Military Drive, and you can see we have got some areas areas of fog out there this morning. In fact, visibility is as low as a quarter of a mile in some areas outside of the city center of San Antonio. Hondo, quarter mile visibility, half mile visibility in Rock Springs, three quarters of a mile visibility in New Braunfels. This is a big difference from yesterday. Yesterday we had the clouds, but we didn't have the fog. And today, not only will we have fog, but we could even have areas of sprinkles and mist by the end of the day. Visibility down to a mile at Bernie Stage Airfield. You can really see that outside the city center and the more rural areas, that's where the fog is a little bit worse. And so for today's forecast, cloudy all day long, temperatures kind of coasting. We're at 62 right now. We're really only going to get up to maybe about 68 today. South southeast winds at 5 to 15. Patchy mist and patchy drizzle, especially during the second part of the day today. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? This is what we're going to cover in the forecast in just a few minutes. A front, a cold front arrives later tomorrow, and that will really set up windy conditions Monday night and Tuesday. Thanksgiving, I've made a slight adjustment to the forecast. Still going to be cool as initially forecast, but I put in a few more clouds for Thanksgiving. I'll show you that forecast in a bit. And speaking of Thanksgiving, there could be some travel trouble elsewhere across the nation, not necessarily in Texas, but elsewhere across the nation. So I've got a look at that travel forecast coming up soon. Erica, RJ. Thank you, Sarah. A woman found guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon will find out her sentence tomorrow. Amanda Montoya was previously charged with the murder of her boyfriend, Cesar Gallegos, back in 2016. This was a retrial after Montoya's case ended in a mistrial because a jury couldn't decide a verdict. On Friday, a new jury spent about 11 hours deliberating and came back with not guilty on murder, but guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. That is still a first degree felony charge and the punishment range is five to 99 years in prison. The punishment phase will begin Monday morning in the 227th District Court. A suspected serial killer will be making his first court appearance tomorrow up in Travis County. Raul Mesa was arrested back in May for allegedly killing his roommate Jesse Fraga. Mesa, before being arrested, called police and implicated himself not only in Fraga's death, but the murder of a 65-year-old Austin woman named Gloria Lofton 
back in 2019. Austin police say that they are looking into eight to 10 cold cases that Mesa may be connected with, including a possible case here in San Antonio. Mesa had previously been in jail for murder all the way back in 1982. He was given a plea deal in the murder of an eight year old girl named Kendra Page. He served only 11 years of that sentence. Mesa, who is charged with capital murder, he is charged with capital murder and there's no word yet if the death penalty will be applied in this case. And we're taking a live look outside right now at a display of t-shirts with the names of those who were killed by gun violence in the last five years in our community. The display was put together by representatives of Texas Impact and Cops Metro. They held an event yesterday to bring attention to the unchecked gun violence in Bear County. The display is called Vidas Robadas, or Stolen Lives. They are t-shirts lettered with the name, age, and date of death for every person in Bear County killed by gun violence. The display will be up along Cherry Street and will remain in support of the gun exchange program happening today at the Alamo Dome. Yeah, something we've been reporting on this week. So the Voluntary Weapons Exchange event is happening from 12 to 5 p.m., so it's a little bit later today, at the Alamo Dome in parking lot B. It's being held by Councilman John Courage through his District 9 Council office. You can look for more reports in our later newscasts and learn. To learn more, visit ksat.com. And speaking of gun violence, a group of sixth graders here in San Antonio is committed to making a change by documenting how gun violence is impacting their very own community. That's right. Stephen Cavasso shows us how students at Booker T. Washington Elementary see the east side through their own lens. As journalists, it's our job to bring you the news, whether it's good or bad. And camera phones like this can help us bring you the headlines. But here on the east side, it's more than just the headlines. It's a community. And students here at Booker T. Washington Elementary School are getting a new point of view in a place they call home. Right now, it's just the basics for this group of sixth graders as they learn how to capture a moment. So there's a better chance that I'm going to be shaking it. Right. Their and teacher, Francisco right. Cortez, right. tells me moments like can be cool. defining. Well, some were born here and they live here and they represent here and, you know, nobody knows it like they do. I think a lot of people in the, in the city don't really have an idea of what's going on in the East Side period. Um, you hear it a lot through, you know, watching the, the news. Yeah, and unfortunately, a lot of that's going to be negative. Cortez says these students want to shatter that stigma. He calls them the light catcher society. They document their world and honor their community one picture at a time, hoping to shift perspectives, share the stories of their community, develop their voices through photography, poetry, and advocacy, collaborate with city leaders, nonprofits, and even artists. Every year, a group of new sixth graders pick up a camera and learn how to tell a story through their own lens. And in a few months, these students will begin to take pictures with a purpose. special project as yeah. well, like surrounding yeah. uh, guns. Correct. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. So the students, you know, decided to, to document that and not in the sense of how, you know, dramatic and violent it actually is, but the, the effects of it besides the obvious, you know, how it affects people's mental, mental health. Photograph them aside from their neighborhood, but sit down with them, create an interview that was specific to that person, uh, and then also record that. I was actually um, a victim of gun violence and when I was 15 years old I was actually shot 15 times in one incident. I'm very very aware of the trauma that is associated with it. Folks range from victims of gun violence uh, themselves, people that had lost you know children to gun violence, police officers, uh, people that work for organizations that that counter you know gun violence. These portraits were displayed at an exhibit last year. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg attended the exhibit and the students were able to discuss that plan with him. Last year, students suggested documenting gun sales, data tracking the first month, more classes on responsible gun ownership, more safe storage programs. Gortez says that is the real mission of the Light Catcher Society. It's getting the kids to care about different issues in their community 
and take action. People always really want numbers. You know, how, how successful is this program? Give me numbers, numbers, numbers. Um, but it's really hard to quantify the change that, that is made. And, and the idea is to plant that seed so that one day maybe they can create some type of change, whether it be through the photos or something they do later on in life but at the same time make them aware of these issues so they don't fall into these traps that exist you know, for them. Okay, I got it. So you said you've been taking pictures for a long time. Yes. Especially because my mom, she always wants me to take pictures of her, so yeah, I'm really good at the pictures. <laughs> so you enjoy the class? Yes, I do. Sasha Harris has a passion for her neighborhood. She tells me she wants to highlight the beauty of San Antonio's and east I just side. Love I like it because we're able to be outside, be in the fresh air, and able to talk to people and tell them like their history or their culture in San Antonio or the east side. While there's no easy solution to gun safety, kids like Sasha and her class are trying to shed light on how it impacts their neighbors while shifting perceptions from negative to positive. Happening today in Lytle, the city's water system will undergo maintenance. It starts tonight at 10 and will end tomorrow morning around 3. Now, water pressure there will be reduced as crews do their work, and the city hopes that water pressure will be kept above 20 PSI. We have been told to warn you, though, that if water pressure falls below a well, excuse me, if it falls too low, a boil water notice will be issued. If that happens, the city will let everyone know as quickly as possible, and that boil notice will likely last then until late Tuesday morning. All right. Hopefully you're enjoying maybe a breakfast taco, a little bit of coffee right I'm now. Hungry. Thanks, cool. Andrew. Yeah, there we go. I meant to do that. You meant to do that? Yeah. Um, it's 840 right now and uh, 62 degrees outside. When we come back, some sights and sounds from last night's Light the Way at the University of the Incarnate Word will tell you what to expect if you decide to check it out this week. And a look here at live cam. Man, we've been seeing a lot of fog here on your Sunday morning, but uh, expected some changes here down the line. Sarah Spivey standing by with the very latest on our forecast. We'll be right back. In case you missed it last night, the annual Light the Way Holiday Festival filled the night with holiday cheer at the University of the Incarnate Word. The event featured a million twinkling Christmas lights, a firework display, and plenty of festive fun. People enjoyed live music, food trucks, and conversations with the man himself, Santa. Our very own Steve Spreester was the MC of the event. It is not holiday season until we light the lights at the corner of Hildebrand and Broadway. This is a good reason to all come together in joy, in hope, and yes, in light. So we have so much to be thankful for and so much to celebrate. Now, in case you missed the event last night, you can catch, you can watch it all actually on our website right now. And you can see all the lights every night at dusk now through January 6th. It's really cool out there. I don't know. Love if, driving by. Yeah, it's mm. gorgeous. Yeah, a lot beautiful. of beautiful light Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Not so beautiful the weather today, a guys. Fog it's it's icky. gonna be gray and cool mm -hmm. and at times damp in some places. We're gonna patchy mist and drizzle as well mm -hmm. later on today. But yeah, you know what? Things will clear out nicely for us uh, during the day tomorrow. But right now, this is what we're stuck with. 62 degrees, visibility down to three miles at the airport. And this is where that camera is. You can look out and all you can see is about three miles out in front of you. And visibility is down to half a mile, though, in Bernie and down to a quarter of a mile in Hondo. So there are areas where the fog is a bit more dense. So as you're driving out and about this morning, just be aware of that. We're going to have gray conditions with us all day. Fog through the morning, some sprinkles by noon, hanging out in the low to mid 60s all day long. Sprinkles and patchy drizzle possible. 67 around for the high temperature. Patchy drizzle develops later on tonight. Not amounting to much, but enough to keep it gray out there. So let's go ahead and take a look at our weather setup. A couple of isolated showers up near Fredericksburg. Those could skirt northern Comal County here uh, near to Canyon Lake in just the next hour or so. But this is all part of a bigger system, low pressure system across parts of Kansas. This is our front that's going to move through tomorrow. Now, the cold air 
is not too cold behind this front, but it is going to allow for temperatures to drop before uh, Thanksgiving. And speaking of Thanksgiving, let's go ahead and talk about travel across the nation. This same system is gonna cause a headache for some folks. Now around Texas, if you're traveling tomorrow, Tuesday, weather's going to be pretty quiet, maybe an isolated shower out near the Houston area. But this same system is going to move through uh, areas in the uh, Great Lakes region. There's going to be some travel issues up there on Tuesday and then on Wednesday, especially in New England and up in the northeast toward uh, New York. You can see that there's going to be some issues potentially for travel on Wednesday. Let's transition and talk about an adjustment to the forecast that I've made for Thanksgiving. Now, it does look like a low pressure system is going to develop in Mexico on Wednesday, but that low pressure system right now, all indications are that it's going to stay south of San Antonio, not bringing us any rain, but perhaps some rain for the Rio Grande Valley Wednesday night into Thursday. That low will be moving east on Thanksgiving Day itself, so we should at least be looking at a dry Thanksgiving with uh, some more clouds than initially forecast and a high temperature in the low to mid 60s. If that low, if it looks like the new forecast data comes out and that low moves northward, that's when we'll have to introduce rain chances Wednesday night and potentially Thursday morning. But that's a big if, and it's an encouragement to continue to check back in with us as we get more forecast data for uh, Wednesday night and Thanksgiving. Otherwise, Black Friday is going to be nice, 66 degrees, but there could be some snow up in parts of uh, the Rockies and the central portion of the United States during travel day on Friday. So here's what I've got for your Thanksgiving forecast for now. Again, continue to check back in with us. A chilly start with some clouds at 42. So if you're planning on smoking the turkey, getting the smoker out early in the morning. Know that you're going to need the jacket by the afternoon, though, low to mid 60s for the high. And one last thing I want to mention, it is going to get windy tomorrow night and Tuesday morning. Wind gusts of up to 35 to 40 miles per hour. That's after the front moves through tomorrow night into Tuesday morning. That's when it's going to get windy. So make some adjustments if you've got some of that lightweight uh, Christmas decorations out early this morning. Um, go ahead and make those changes potentially today. <laughs> so that way you're not <laughs> fishing for the Christmas decorations later on. Otherwise, again, watching the forecast carefully to see if that low moves a little bit north. Right now, indications are it's going to stay south with its rain. Putting that on my to-do list today. <laughs> Sounds good. Absolutely. Thanks, and speaking of Thanksgiving, of course, New York City gearing up. So are you a fan of the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade? Absolutely. There we go. Love Absolutely. to hear that. <laughs> Love to watch it. <laughs> this will be the 97th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and there will be several new floats this year, including Mutant Mayhem, sweet, <laughs> Palace of Sweets, Igniting Mem Memories, and the deliciously delectable World of Wonka. The Good Burger Mobile will also make an appearance to wow. promote the new film Good Burger 2. Didn't know there was a new film. <laughs> Organizers say this year's parade has 26 floats, 16 giant character balloons, marching bands, and more. My son loves parades. Like, that's, wow, like, he's okay. just like, he's in front of the TV cheering, he's like, woo! <laughs> so we'll be watching. Yeah, yeah, very cool stuff there. The Woody Woodpecker, is that thing still <laughs> in the Woody, parade? What? what? <laughs> That's the one I remember from when I was growing up, but uh, I digress. Uh, 851 right now and 62 degrees outside. Now here's a look at what's coming up tomorrow on GMSA. Discipline and perseverance, I think, are the biggest things that I've taken away as a person from this sport. Diane, what do you Acrobatics and tumbling may not come to mind. First, when you think about collegiate sports tomorrow on GMSA, we'll introduce you to a local senior. How is taking on the sport in a big way? You won't want to miss her story and her message about perseverance. And with Thanksgiving around the corner, the feast is also coming to a special ice cream. I'm not sure about this, but Baskin Robbins has created a new flavor called Turkey Day Fixins. They say it is a combination of some of the sides you look forward to on Thanksgiving, including sweet potato, autumn spices, rolls of cranberry sauce, and pieces of honey cornbread. 
Sounds okay, honestly. Uh, really? Ew. All right, so in the pollen count today, molds and juniper are low, so no major issues in the pollen count today, but it is going to be a gray, kind of gloomy and cool day. Some fog out there right now. Highs only in the mid-60s. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, warmer, 78, but then a front moves through, making it windy. Gusts up to 35 miles per hour tomorrow night and Tuesday. We have added a little bit more cloud cover on Thanksgiving Day itself, but it still should be cool and nice. Mornings in the 40s, afternoons in the 60s. Well, it's been sun, Sarah. I love I, being here I with love you. You guys come to and be in here. It's really exciting. Go Cowboys. Go Texans. We'll see you guys later. Have a good one.